Hello, my name is Stacy Ellis. I am the head of health, physical education, and recreation, and here to talk with you this evening about uh, the LSDC recreation and wellness uh, pathways and career opportunities. We're really going to focus on, you know, once you get a, the degree here at Lord Fairfax or the, the programs, uh, where does that lead you? So I'm going to kind of do it backwards. I'm going to talk about the careers first, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the program or classes itself. So first I got to explain this picture is actually from one of my uh, former students who just graduated uh, this year. He is starting an outdoor recreation business in the industry and uh, love that he's added all these murals. So I'm going to give him a little, a little shout out. Uh, just to get started, I'm going to play this little quick video that our marketing department developed just to give you a little insight into the program. So that little video just gave us an introduction to the various career paths uh, that we're going to be talking about this evening. Uh, the link above is actually to, we have a recreation, LSCC Recreation Outdoor Leadership uh, Facebook page and Instagram page. So if you want to see all the fun things that we are doing in the program, uh, check us out on either one of those social media. Uh, so first I want to talk about uh, recreation therapy or therapeutic recreation. This is a field that a lot of people maybe aren't as familiar with. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit more background on this one. Um, this industry is uh, essentially a holistic approach to recreation uh, or helping people heal through leisure and recreational opportunities. Uh, so the American Therapeutic Recreation Association is the organization that oversees the accreditation and the certification of uh, recreation therapists. Again, it is, they define it as using recreation and experiential interventions uh, to bring about a change. So the emotional, the social, the mental, the physical, the cognitive uh, changes that somebody can experience by doing art therapy or uh, taking a hike or kayaking or, or something like that uh, with intended outcomes. So it does require a bachelor's degree in order to sit for the national certification exam um, to become a certified therapeutic recreation specialist. So once you finish the program at Lord Fairfax, uh, you have a, a two year degree and then you go on to complete your bachelor's and then are able to sit after you also do the internship. Uh, I have students that actually have one student right now. She came into Lord Fairfax thinking she you wanted to, or previously, that wanted to be a um, park ranger and has now gone on uh, to George Mason University. She did have a background in nursing and ultimately through the courses at Lord Fairfax decided that she wanted to take more of that uh, therapeutic route. So she is getting her master's right now in therapeutic recreation at George Mason. So you never know, you maybe start in the program here and think you're coming in with one idea and then learn about all of the other opportunities there are in the recreation and wellness industry and maybe it leads you down a different path, which is pretty awesome. As far as therapeutic recreation specialists, where you would see them, maybe you would see them at a senior center, uh, in a nursing home, you see them working with adaptive recreation uh, through parks and recreation settings. Uh, some 
parks and rec departments even just ha or uh, facilities just have a whole department in adaptive recreation. You may see therapeutic recreation in jails uh, or working in outward bound and wilderness settings uh, with, with youth. In the medical field, you're gonna see therapeutic recreation specialists in inpatient, um, maybe on the uh, psychiatric floor of the hospital, uh, also coordinating and working as part of the medical team with occupational therapists, physical therapists, uh, physicians, et cetera, and working with patients through the spectrum of um, mental illness to Alzheimer's disease to PTSD, amputees, uh, so any kind of physical or cognitive mental impairment. Looking at the career pathways, again, I have uh, or we have at Lord Fairfax a degree in therapeutic recreation, a two-year program that we then have pathways, uh, two plus two agreements uh, with Radford University and Shepherd University. And we're also working with George Mason to uh, get that seamless pathway for students as well. Again, this is a, an industry that is more uh, medically involved and, and based, but involves a lot of the recreation um, aspects, which is kind of neat, combines those two. So you can see the outlook and uh, the median pay uh, there. Really just depends on the setting that you're going to be involved in. Again, nursing homes, maybe it's um, the medical versus the community will be different as far as salaries go. When we're looking further beyond therapeutic recreation, we then have uh, parks and recreation and nonprofit recreation. So I just started to make a list of all the jobs that potentially you could get within the parks and recreation industry. And uh, there's a lot. <laughs> you know, if you think about your public parks and recreation, um, you have your community centers, you have aquatic centers, uh, and you have like your main buildings where the programs are, are being done. You know, that looks different here in smaller counties, Clark County, Frederick County, where you have a smaller staff compared to, um, my husband actually works in Loudoun County as an adult sports specialist with their parks and rec department. And so it becomes more specialized as opposed to a smaller uh, county where maybe you have one role as a recreation programmer, but you actually get to do uh, 5k event management and you get to do programming for sports and you get to you know dabble in a, a lot of different things uh, and so if you like that diversity that's a really good uh, setting. Do not be alarmed with the salary below you know it's looking at um, somebody that just has a baseline high school diploma. Uh, I couldn't find uh, data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics on those that have, you know, higher degrees. Um, I will say if you're starting, again, I'll use my husband as an example, uh, he started at a community center and then kind of worked his way up uh, and salary has increased as a result of that. Again, different opportunities, maybe it's adaptive recreation, maybe you are working with youth or adult sports, um, which is obviously looking a lot different these days uh, with COVID. Uh, so recreation is having to adapt and offer things outside and online uh, and really engage their customers or their participants and meet those community needs uh, that way. So again, it could be also our local parks. You know, we're also talking about, uh, it could be state parks, national parks in that recreation uh, field as well. So even just our local parks have park managers, they have recreation programmers uh, and maintenance rangers as well. And again, that's usually in those larger um, cities or uh, counties. Nonprofit recreation. Um, I usually take my students to Boulder Crest Wounded Veterans Retreat Center in Bluemont, Virginia. They do a lot of um, 
it, recreation therapy or recreation, it is a nonprofit uh, facility. And so they'll do things like take their veterans out to the uh, archery range. And so they're pulling back their arrows and letting go of the arrows and then they're letting go of something stressor, for example. So they're physically doing something, mentally kind of releasing. Uh, so that's an example of a of nonprofit in the area, our boys and girls clubs, um, those sorts of things offer a lot of recreational opportunities as well and careers. Looking at the outdoor pathways piece. Don't let the, the name of the program, Recreation Outdoor Leadership, uh, dissuade you. You know, yes, there is an outdoor component, but if you're not an outdoor person, there are so many more uh, opportunities, again, that we've mentioned so far. But again, uh, you know, you could be working as a recreation program and you're in the office all of the time. You could be in the gym running facilities or events or what have you. So it doesn't have to be an outdoor thing. Uh, but there are outdoor opportunities. I'm a nature lover myself. Uh, so there's opportunities like camp management. That could even fall into nonprofit if you have non nonprofit camps for youth. Uh, so there could be manager opportunities, outdoor business owners, you know, running um, race events or rock climbing uh, businesses, you know, whatever your, your niche is, whitewater rafting guides. Uh, then there's also state and national park uh, rangers. So we're lucky that we have a lot, uh, several uh, state parks around us, and of course we have Shenandoah National Park. Uh, part of the recreation program at Lord Fairfax includes practicum experiences. So I have students that will go to Seven Bend State Park, for example, and complete a practicum uh, volunteer experience with them and really kind of get their foot in the door so that there's opportunities if they're hiring later, you know, they kind of have that uh, connection. So it's always important and it's key part of our classes uh, to include those hands-on and experiential opportunities. Other opportunities may be environmental educators, uh, wilderness guides, or even um, conservation police officers. I looked for, there's such a wide range here, so I didn't specifically you know, go into salaries with each one of these, but we can absolutely uh, pull that data, and if you have questions, feel free to contact me. Sports management uh, is a big one that a lot of students are also interested in and uh, may want to pursue a career as an athletic director, a sports event coordinator, maybe again as a YMCA youth leader, a campus recreation director, um, maybe it's just campus recreation in general. Our student activities department at Lord Fairfax Community College has gotten very creative uh, this semester and with COVID uh, to move online and we do a lot. The recreation students have the opportunity to work with our campus uh, recreation program to offer um, programs for our students. So another good hands-on learning opportunity uh, for our students. Again, maybe we're working with a community center or you want to go more into those uh, race director roles or um, sports ma management or, or marketing specialist. So even in just this sports management, track. There's so many varied opportunities uh, for careers. We happen to be hosting our, put in a quick plug, uh, Wits for Wellness 5k on September 19th. So I do have my uh, recreation students volunteer typically at the 5k to get some of that event management experience. I've also had students interested in pursuing uh, tourism and special events planning. I actually just had a student contact me recently that completed at George Mason and did her final internship at, um, I forget how many hours, maybe it was 300 hours in Houston at the mayor's office in their special events 
organization. Uh, and so she started at Lord Fairfax and, you know, is, is going um, that route as far as special events planning goes. So the salary is quite uh, decent for um, working in special events, hosting conferences, that sort of thing. Um, lots of opportunities here, potentially even working with your economic development specialist in your specific county uh, to help kind of promote that outdoor recreation and tourism piece. We even in the state of Virginia have now established an outdoor recreation um, office. And so the state is really looking at the fact that there is so much opportunity as far as outdoor recreation in Virginia uh, and working to promote that and get outsiders uh, spending their dollars here, right? Like visiting as tourists. Uh, so they're highlighting a lot of that now. So it's great that the state is recognizing that and, and getting involved there as well. That, that is uh, the main focus that I have as far as the recreation side goes. I'm gonna come back at the end and talk about the uh, various programs and the two plus two uh, agreements that we have in place. Again, if you have questions about the recreation side or a specific job, definitely let me know. Um, we do in the RPK 100 class, which is the introduction to Parks Rec and Leisure Studies, we really delve into the different careers. We do a career exploration project uh, so that you can learn more about the opportunities uh, in that industry. On the wellness side, um, so just a little bit of background. My background is kinesiology and exercise physiology. I was a certified, or I still am a certified athletic trainer, uh, and then came through the recreation side and taken courses and that sort of thing, uh, kind of the, the opposite way. So I came at recreation from the, the wellness side. So as an exercise physiologist, um, lots of opportunities here. This could be working in a hospital setting. Uh, I actually did cardiac rehab as a graduate student. So those who had just had heart attacks came to our cardiac rehab facility. It was a combination of staff that included exercise physiologists uh, and nurses. And we worked together to monitor uh, patients while getting them back to a physical activity, um, so to increase their heart strength. So again, this can be in an outpatient kind of setting. Uh, it could be just at a, a fitness facility. Um, there are many certifications here, uh, particularly through the American College of Sports Medicine is highly recommended uh, to become a certified exercise physiologist. Uh, this requires typically, a, well it does, a bachelor's degree uh, to get some of those certifications and you typically will get a, a bachelor's degree in um, kinesiology, which is the study of muscle movement, exercise physiology, so figuring out how, what's going on in the body during exercise, um, and you know, lots of opportunities as far as our four-year schools go. We actually just developed, I'm getting ahead of myself, but we just developed a two plus two agreement with Shepherd University uh, for health science and health promotion. And both of those, more of the health science piece would lead you towards this track of exercise physiology. Again, as uh, I mentioned, I'm a certified athletic trainer. So an athletic trainer is one that helps with the prevention, uh, rehabilitation, assessment of athletic injuries. These settings are quite diverse. I happen to work at the high school level uh, for my portion of, of working as an athletic trainer, uh, but they are in police, settings, they are as working as physician extenders, uh, hospitals, fitness centers, gyms, working with professional sports teams. You know, they're the ones that are running out on the field, uh, taking care of athletic injuries. There's actually, um, I need to make a little note about this chart. There's been a change at the accreditation level that used to be a bachelor's degree in order to get 
become a certified athletic trainer, you do have to have the certain amount of coursework and um, then complete uh, hours and internship hours in order to sit for the national certification exam. They've recently moved it to a master's level program in order to really kind of elevate the, the level of healthcare and recognition that athletic trainers provide. So again, the setting kind of dictates the salary, um, but quite diverse settings that an athletic trainer can serve. Just as a side note, also with that one, we're offering a uh, new course this semester, it's HLT 156, Healthcare for Athletic Injuries, that will be online. Uh, that will use the, the book, Arnheim Apprentice book, that I actually was the gold standard for studying for that exam. Uh, so we'll really delve into athletic injuries if that is an interest to you. There's also, um, I wanna talk about the difference between a personal trainer and a strength and conditioning coach. I'll start with a strength and conditioning coach. That is someone that typically uh, maybe wants to work with uh, sports teams to develop uh, sports specific training programs or periodization models, um, you know, planning for peak performance during season, the off season training, that sort of thing. To get the CSCS certification, Certified Strength and Conditioning Coach, uh, you have to have a bachelor's degree in either kinesiology or exercise physiology. So again, you can start here at Lord Fairfax, get your general studies or yeah, in science, um, take those classes in anatomy, the nutrition, um, we even offer an exercise science class, and then transfer to get your bachelor's before you sit for that certification. We also offer a personal training program here at the college, uh, Personal Training and Group Exercise Leadership. It is a 16 credit program that is um, aimed at offering the background courses, the anatomy, the nutrition, the kinesiology. Uh, we capstone it with a class where I have students um, assigned to volunteers and those volunteers are volunteers to get their fitness assessments done and to complete workouts that are developed by the students. Uh, so the students are to progress these clients uh, throughout the semester. So this is the program that prepares you to sit for a national certification exam. I would encourage you to do a lot of research with personal training. You know, the unfortunate thing about personal training is that it is an unregulated industry, meaning that anyone can essentially take a weekend workshop and call themselves a personal trainer and not have that background or hands-on experience or knowledge um, and really causes maybe a safety risk um, when working with clients one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, when you're looking into personal training, look into national certifications that are you know, known nationally, um, not just regional certifications. So those may include the American College of Sports Medicine, the National Academy of Sports Medicine, um, the ACE, the American Council on Exercise, there's NFPT, so National Federation of Personal Training. That's just a sample of some of those nationally recognized certifications. Again, you can start here at Lord Fairfax with that career study certificate to give you that baseline. All of those classes will then transfer into, um, you know, a program in kinesiology, for example, if you wanted to continue that. With personal training, uh, you definitely have to um, be adaptable. You know, you're working perhaps at your client's schedules with the change to COVID or with COVID. You know, I actually had my student, uh, I was his client, and so we had to do kind of telehealth appointments where, you know, we were doing it via Zoom and he was working on my form and technique uh, while I was at my house and he was at his. So it's, it's being adaptable in, uh, as a personal trainer as well. Uh, and really just kind of figuring out your niche. You know, I've had students that want to work with postpartum uh, women. I have those that want to work just with seniors. 
So really finding your niche within the personal training world really helps to um, make you that specialist and the go-to person uh, for that area. So really your salary kind of just depends on, you know, how much can you work? How much, if you're working at a gym or a facility, how much commission are they taking out of that uh, versus you having your own business? You know, are you having to have expenditures and that sort of thing? So even in the wellness, you can kind of see where wellness and uh, recreation overlap because maybe we have um, at a community center, we have a fitness center where maybe a personal trainer is um, being used for classes or even running the facility. So lots of overlap and uh, recreation leads to wellness. So again, lots of overlap in those two areas. I just want to mention that we have a lot of opportunities. We've been working hard to make seamless pathways for students um, once you're done programs here. Uh, so there are opportunities to finish your um, associate's degree here and then go another two years and complete at Ferrum uh, University uh, in Ferrum, uh, Virginia. In ecotourism or recreation leadership, there's opportunities at Radford in therapeutic recreation, tourism and special events, and outdoor recreation leadership. Uh, there's also Shepherd University. We completed uh, the health science and health promotion uh, pathways, which I mentioned previously, therapeutic recreation and public recreation and parks administration. We also, you know, while I don't have George Mason listed here, um, there are a lot of our classes that just besides you know, going into these two plus two agreements, uh, we'll go to other institutions, ODU, George Mason, uh, et cetera. We're just still working on getting those official agreements together. So those programs that we offer here are that Associate of Arts and Sciences and General Studies. We have a Recreation and Outdoor Leadership uh, degree. We also, which is, um, can be broken into a career study certificate. So it's the very same classes uh, minus the general education requirements. So that's a 16 credit uh, program if you're just taking the career study certificate. Looking at the personal training and group exercise leadership, uh, that is, as I mentioned, uh, your nutrition, your um, weight training classes, you know, some other, I recommend yoga. Uh, to help with that breathing and relaxation piece that's so important for uh, lifting and exercise, exercise science classes, and also that um, experience where you get that hands-on working with um, clients. This fall, we actually, I know classes start on Monday, but it's not too late, uh, particularly the recreation classes. Uh, we have our are, are moving all of those online. Um, and so we're getting creative with our, our programming. We have the Intro to Parks and Rec and Leisure Studies, which is online. We have the Recreation Leadership online uh, and hiking online too. And yes, that sounds crazy, but it really works. Uh, we had a great success at that uh, this summer. As far as the personal training uh, program, you have your nutrition courses, weight trainings offered online, anatomy and physiology online as well as uh, nutrition. So lots of opportunities to, even though we're in the COVID world, uh, to continue the education in recreation and wellness and perhaps pursue uh, one of these career pathways. So as I mentioned, uh, if you have any questions, I guess I should have typed out my email here. Uh, my email is sellis at lfcc.edu. I would be glad to um, sit down with you or Zoom <laughs> or phone call with you uh, to talk more about the, the program and opportunities in the industry, make you some connections uh, in the field so you can start talking to professionals and, and get a feel for uh, what it is that you want to pursue. So I look forward to hearing from you uh, and 
have a great night. Awesome. Thank you, Stacy. Yeah. Uh, before we hop off here, everybody that uh, is attending uh, or watching this as a recorded message, make sure that you submit your entry at tinyurl.com slash LFCC dash summer 2020. We are looking to give away an iPad mini, AirPods, and a Nintendo Switch come this Monday, August 24th. We will draw names before we send out our Monday email, so do not miss out on this chance to win. Have a great night. <laughs>